Hi everyone, this is Muhammad Irfan from Bowdoin College. In this video, I'll be showing you how to convert an NFA to a DFA and in particular how to deal with Epsilon transitions. I'll be following chapter 2 of Michael Scott's Programming Languages book. Um, here I have an illustrative example of an NFA. Uh, this example showcases some of the special cases that happen uh, when we uh, convert an NFA to a DFA. It would be great if you could just pause this video and take a closer look at the transitions. The start state as denoted by this uh, little arrow is S. We also have two final states, one is G, the other one is F. Both of them are double circled. There are two input symbols, 0 and 1. Of course, you can see epsilon here, but epsilon is not really an input symbol. It's rather the absence of any input symbol, and epsilon stands for spontaneous transition. One other thing I'll note here is that if you look at this transition going from A to F, uh, it's labeled with 0, comma, 1. Here, comma stands for OR. That means that if we, are, if we are at A and we get a 0 or a 1, we can go to F. Okay? This NFA bears the two hallmarks that distinguish NFA from DFAs. Uh, number one is, of course, epsilon or spontaneous transitions. And the second hallmark is that there can be multiple transitions out of a state for the same input symbol. So let's take a look at A, okay? And let's think about the input symbol of one. With one, you can go from A to F, right? With one, you can also loop back to A, okay? So for the same input symbol, there are multiple transitions going out of A. With that, uh, we'll uh, look at how we can convert this NFA to an equivalent DFA, and our approach would be tabular. So we'll be constructing a table, in this case, uh, uh, with three columns, okay? So the first column header is DFA state. The second column header is one of our input symbols, zero. And the third column header is our other input symbol, one. You can see that we don't have epsilon as a column header. is because epsilon is not an input symbol, okay? So uh, when we start uh, building up this table, in the first row, the first thing we'll uh, write down is our DFA start state. By definition, uh, each... DFA state uh, would be a subset of NFA states. So you can see four NFA states. So each of our DFA states uh, will be a subset of these four NFA states. And in particular, in the first row, the first thing we'll write is actually our uh, DFA start state. It's an NFA start state S and all other NFA states reachable from S using epsilon transition put together that makes our DFA start state. In this case, if you look at the NFA start state S, you can see that there's an epsilon transition going to F. So S and F together is our DFA start state. So although you can see two states like S, F, and we put them together in a set notation, these two states together is actually one single DFA state. And in particular, this is our DFA start state, okay? Next, if you look at this uh, column zero, uh, we'll be answering this question. So if we are at S or F and we get a zero input, where can we go? So let's imagine we are at S. And if we get a zero, we can go to G, right? There is no other alternative. So we wrote down G here. And if we are at F and we get a zero, where can we go? Well, of course, nowhere because this is a dead end. There is no outgoing edge out of F. So G is the single set, meaning that there's just one state in it. And uh, this one state is in a set in of itself. And that's our uh, DFA state. This would also be a DFA state, okay? For the next column, we'll be answering this question. Uh, if we are at S or we are at F and we get a one input, where can we go? So let's imagine we are at S and we get a one. Of course, with one, we can go to A. So that's why we wrote down A here. But there's something more here. From A, we can take this epsilon transition and go back to S. And you can see that uh, 1 followed by epsilon, the two of them together amount to just 1. Because epsilon is uh, like an empty, st empty string, absence of any input. Okay, So 1 followed by epsilon is just 1. So we can say that from S... If we get a one input, we can go back to S. And how do you go back to S? Well, first of all, you'll go to uh, go to A, 
then from A, you'll take this epsilon transition back to S. So that's why we also wrote F, S here. We also wrote S. And uh, interestingly, it doesn't end there. Okay. So from S, we can take a one transition to A, then take an epsilon transition back to S, then take another epsilon transition to F. Okay. So one followed by epsilon followed by another epsilon. The three of them together amount to just one. So we can say that with a on an one input, we can go fr from S to F. So that's why we also wrote F here. Okay. So uh, the next thing is, uh, if we are at F and we get a one, where can you go? Well, again, the answer is nowhere because from F, there is no outgoing edge. So that's the end of this uh, uh, the, uh, third column, A, S, F. Okay. So uh, we'll now look at the new states that we are getting. One new state is G. The other new state is A, S, F. So we'll make a row with this uh, new state G. We'll make another row with this second new state A, S, F. And we'll fill out these rows next. So let's uh, first look at the uh, second row here, which starts with G. G is our new DFS state. And again, the same question. If you get a zero, if we are at G and we get a zero, where can you go? Well, you can see that G is also a dead end. There's nowhere to go. So there is nothing here. And same happens with uh, a one input out of G. Okay. So let's go to the third column, uh, third row. Uh, here we have A, S, F. Okay. And uh, we'll be answering this question. If we are at A or S or F and we get a zero input, where can you go? Okay, so let's uh, look at A. Let's say we are at A and we get a zero input. Of course, uh, from A, uh, there's a zero transition straight to F, right? So we can write F here, okay? But there's something more. If we are at A, with an epsilon transition, we can go to S, then we can take this zero transition and go to G. And as you can see, epsilon followed by zero, uh, the two of them together, epsilon followed by zero, amount to just zero. So we can say that uh, if we are at A and we get a zero, we can also go to G. Okay, so G and F, uh, they are there together. Now, uh, we'll also have to look at S and F similarly. If we are at S and we get a zero input, where can you go? Well, we can go to G, okay? We have already written G, so you don't have to write G twice because uh, this is a set notation, and in set, repetition is meaningless, so you'll write G just once, okay? And next, uh, we'll look at F. If we are at F, we get a zero input. Where can we go? Well, nowhere. So that's the end of this second column here, G and F together. And we'll be answering uh, the same question for one input. If we, get a, uh, if we are at A or S or F and we get a one input, where can you go? Okay. So uh, here, uh, let's say we are at A okay, and we get a one input. Of course, first of all, you can go straight to F okay, on a one input. So we wrote down F here. But there's uh, more here, of course. From A on a one input, you can uh, loop back to A. So that's why you also wrote A. Okay. But it doesn't end there. Uh, if we can loop back to A on a one input, we can actually extend it by taking this epsilon transition and go to S, okay? So we can say that uh, we can uh, go from A to S uh, on a one input, okay? It's because one followed by epsilon amount to, that amounts to just one, okay? So that's why we also wrote S. And there's another thing you can see here is that uh, uh, let's say we are at A and we get a one input, then we can follow it by, uh, by an epsilon. We can follow it by another epsilon that takes us back to F. But we, we all already saw that uh, from A, there's a direct uh, edge to F. So again, you don't have to repeat F. You don't have to write F twice. Uh, it's okay to write F just once, okay? Now, um, so what are the new states that you see in this uh, row here? Of, of course, GF is the new state. So we write down GF is in the next row. Uh, well, ASF, how about this one? Well, we just wrote down the row for ASF. So we don't have to write a new row for ASF. If you write a new row, you'll get exactly the same row 
as this one. So it doesn't make any sense to uh, repeat this, okay? So let's go to G, F, and uh, you can see that both G and F, both of them are dead ends. So nothing happens if you get a zero or one. So these are, both of them are blank, okay? So once we construct this table, it's easy to construct the DFA corresponding to this table. Here, uh, here's the DFA. We have four rows here in the uh, DFA uh, in this table. So for each row, we'll have one DFA state, like SF is a DFA state here, G is a DFA state, and so on. So we have four DFA state. First of all, you'll write down the DFA states, then you'll write down the uh, transitions. And the transitions are easy to see in the table, like uh, from SF, if you get a zero, you can go to G. So that's why from SF, there's a zero transition to G. Okay, so there's a zero transition to G. Similarly, from SF, there's a one transition to ASF. Okay, so that's what we wrote down here. From SF, there's a one transition to ASF. Okay, and next uh, from G, there is no transition out of G. So G happens to be a dead end here. Okay, next ASF, from ASF, on a zero transition, you can go to GF. So that's the zero transition going to GF. And on a one transition, you can loop back to ASF. So that's the one transition looping back to ASF, okay? From GF, there's nowhere to go. Uh, it's basically a dead end, so GF stays there. So this is a DFA, and you can see that in this DFA, there is no epsilon transition, of course, and there is no non-determinism here in this DFA. You can check, you can look at every state and look at all of the uh, edges going out of a state and you'll see that there is no non-determinism, okay? Next, uh, what is the uh, DFA start state? Well, we already identified the first uh, row. The first thing we write in the first row is our DFA start state. So we put a little arrow here on SF to denote this is our start state. And uh, next, what is the uh, what are the final states? Well, the, the DFA final states and states, plural is important here, states, because there can be multiple final states. DFA final states are any states, again, plural, containing any of the NFA final states, okay? So if we uh, zoom out a little bit and also uh, take a look at the NFA here, there are two final states, G and F. So any state in our DFA that contains either G or F is actually a DFA final state, okay? So, and interestingly here, every state, every one of our DFA state contains either G or F or both of them. So each and every one of our DFA state also is also a final state, okay? So that's an interesting example where all of our DFA states uh, happen to be our DFA final states. And as a final note, you can see that uh, in our NFA, we had four states. In our DFA, we also have four states. So will it always be the same? Well, no. There exists uh, worst case examples that show that if an NFA has N states, then the DFA can have two to the N, an exponential number of states compared to the number of states in, a, in an NFA. With that, I'll end this uh, video lecture here. Thank you for watching.